Today, we will be making a throw pillow from scratch. This is a great project for beginners, and I will tell you why. Number one, it's all straight stitching with a few corners so you can practice pivoting. Number two, there's just a small amount of hand sewing on the pillow itself, which might sound daunting to a newbie, but hand sewing is a practical skill every seamstress should have. Number three, unlike clothing, you don't have to worry too much about fit with a pillow. And number four, who doesn't need a cool throw pillow or two? Functional projects are always a win for me. Also, you really only need two things to make a pillow, fabric and stuffing, so it's really simple as far as materials go. Speaking of fabric, let's have a little chat about that. I'm using some fairly plain scrap cotton I had on hand for my pillow. I will be posting a second tutorial that shows how to make a zippered throw pillow case. So part of the reason I use this sort of boring fabric in the example is that I'm planning on covering the pillow with a removable and thus washable case. That being said, you can absolutely make this pillow and use it as is without a removable cover. If that's your jam, there's a huge range of fabrics available that make excellent throw pillows. Chenille, velvet, brocade, etc. You can even use fleece or minky if you want something soft and cuddly. The heavier the fabric, the more durable the pillow. And if you're shopping for fabric, look for the home deck section and you should find a nice range of suitable materials. Now let's talk about stuffing. I am using Polyfill, which is the big name brand fiber fill found in most craft stores. You could also do foam or batting or even down. I went with Polyfill because it's cheap and it's easy to use. Lastly, let's address size. Another cool thing about making a pillow from scratch is that you can do any size and any shape. Tiny pillows, huge pillows, round pillows, cat-shaped pillows. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going with a basic square and a standard size for a throw pillow, which is 18 inches by 18 inches. If you want smaller or larger, 16 by 16 and 24 by 24 are very common sizes as well, but again, if you're DIYing it, you can make any size you want. Since I want the finished pillow to be 18 inches by 18 inches, I will add a half inch seam allowance to each side, which means the raw measurements for my pillow will be 19 inches by 19 inches. So here are my two 19 inch squares of fabric. And you can see I've done no ironing whatsoever. And I've laid one square on top of the other, right sides together. I'm going to pin around the entire perimeter of the two squares, but when stitching the pillow together in the next step, it is important to leave a gap for turning the pillow right side out. I like to use colored pins like so, or a marking tool to remind myself not to stitch this part of the pillow closed. Start stitching at one end of the gap using a half inch seam allowance, back stitch to lock your stitches, and then sew around the edges of the pillow. When you get to a corner, stop sewing about half an inch from the edge. Make sure the needle is in the down position, lift the foot, and pivot the fabric. Stitch to the next corner and repeat this pivoting action until you reach the other marked edge of your gap. Backstitch again. Here's a close up of that gap with the backstitching at each end. Now we will clip the corners of the pillow, which will give us more crisp corners at the end and turn it right side out. Just reach in through the gap, grab a handful, and pull it through. Once the pillow is turned right side out, get yourself a pointy pokey tool like a chopstick. Insert the pointy thang inside the pillow and jab it into each corner, but not too hard, because you don't want to actually stab through the pillow, that would be bad. We just want nice square corners. Just look at those corners. Too square to be hip. Now we shall iron. Could I have done the ironing at the beginning? Should I have done some ironing at the beginning? Of course. But there was this one guy that used to comment on my videos bitching about my wrinkly fabric and how unprofesh it was, and even though I doubt he's still watching, I like to throw in some wrinkly AF fabric now and then just because I know it would piss him off, so suck on that guy. Actually, ironing serves a purpose at this point. I like to press the gap, keeping those half inch seam allowances nice and even as I do so. And the lines from the ironing will help when hand stitching the gap closed at the end. Now we shall stuff. Tear off a big old handful of fiber fill or your stuffing of choice and shove it inside the pillow like you're stuffing a Christmas goose. I like to start by stuffing the two farthest corners first, making sure to really get the filling into the crevices. 
Continue filling one handful at a time until your pillow is plump yet tender. Periodically push the polyfill to the edges and the corners to make sure there are no underfilled pockets. This is one of the ways I make sure the filling inside is properly fluffed, not just sitting there in weird lumpy wads. I stick my hand and kind of spider it around in there. If you find you've added too much stuffing, that's okay. Just take some out and give it the old razzle-dazzle to fluff the polyfill up again. A properly stuffed pillow has a slightly rounded appearance when laid on its side. Once you have stuffed the pillow to your heart's content, it is time to dress the nasty gaping hole we left in the side of the pillow. I'm going to stitch this shut by hand, which will give the best possible finish, and is definitely the way you want to go if you're leaving the pillow as is. However, if you're going to be covering your pillow with a nicer case, you could pin the edges together and machine stitch the gap closed. You'll want to mash the fiber fill as far to the opposite side as you can so that you can wrangle it onto your machine and then give it a good fluffing once it's sewn. But if you want to see what this hand stitching business is all about, check out my other videos for a more in-depth tutorial on the ladder stitch. Hot diggity dog, we did it. We made a dang pillow. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss my next tutorial. Leave a comment below and let me know how your project turned out. And be sure to visit whatthecraft.com for more crafty tips, tutorials, and kick-ass sewing patterns.